What's up, guys? Email Game Changers Group. Welcome to the first ever free email copy review that I've done. I normally charge lots of money for this. The only other way to get me to do this is in my $2,500 per quarter mastermind group called The Collective. So this will be fun. We'll see how this goes. Um, I picked these at random. Now, I will say I gave a little bit of favoritism to if I like the title. So if you want your Google Doc to pop out, you know, make it a title I like. I'm doing five today instead of three just because I'm feeling generous and fun. Um, the only way to guarantee that I'll look at your stuff is in the collective, but uh, I'm excited to do this. There was some fun titles and stuff in here, so I'm just gonna do these at least to start as a Loom video. I'm gonna record it, give you my feedback, and then we'll see how I upload it into the group, but uh, very excited for this. So this first one is from Perka Worth. Uh, and honestly, this got me. So this is the subject line. I accidentally ordered star, 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 star cheese, which I was thinking of a certain D word, dick. Um, and I didn't know if that's what it would be, but that's a very good subject line because you go, okay, what, what is this? What is this about? This good curiosity, um, the use of the stars could also end up being not a swear word, uh, but it just creates a level of intrigue. So I'm going to read it. Yo, today you're going to hear an audience building idea from heaven. It'll help you build a tribe of raving fans. The story starts with Pau de Quillo. Um, or if you don't know Portuguese, that's cheesy bread puffs. Every morning in Brazil, I do buy some. I think that's probably just a little typo. I buy some. Um, one thing here is I actually, because I, for the most part, I won't be reading these until I pull them up because I prefer to give my first initial feedback. I just had glanced over this one before here uh the story's good so this is almost not a great opening line for how good the rest of the story is um i would actually open the story with ever been embarrassed but don't know why and just open the story with this ever been embarrassed but don't know why that's right there. The story starts with Padakia. It doesn't necessarily matter. You don't have to establish. You're going to hear an audience building idea from heaven. It'll help you build a tribe of braving fans. I'm more interested in the story itself. If you've got a great story, lead with the story. Don't lead with, you know, the benefit of the thing. Like, I would go straight into, have you ever been embarrassed but didn't know why? Then the story starts with Padakia. If you don't know Portuguese, it's cheesy bread puffs. Every morning in Brazil, I buy some. It's the kind of addiction you don't go to rehab for. Great little personality-driven line. Funny little piece there anyway every time i ordered pow to Kia, which i know i'm saying it wrong because of this email but uh the staff would burst into laughter i was clueless that sinking feeling kicked in when you're embarrassed but don't know why until my friend joined me one day and she laughed her ass off why my friend told me i was making a huge mistake how i was pronouncing pow like pow which in portuguese translates to dick i actually chuckled when i read this uh first and therefore every day for five months at cafes all over brazil i was asking for a dick of cheese Instead of bread of cheese, it hit me like a boomerang to the face. Remember, your audience is a mirror showing you your mistakes. Just as my embarrassing order was mirrored by cafe giggles, your followers will always show you what works and what's a train wreck. Their feedback, whether through comments, analytics, likes, retweets, or direct messages, is the mirror of the impact of your storytelling. Here's the catch. So one thing I just want to say for everybody submitting these, if you can just give me a little context at the top of what your email is, of what you're selling, or what your niche is, makes a huge difference for me because otherwise I don't know what you're selling or what you're talking about and that makes it harder for me to judge it. So, like how I ignored the signals on staff, many creators ignore the signals and their audience continue to put out content without trying to iterate. It's a huge missed opportunity because your audience is trying to tell you what they want, how they feel, what you need to create. So, in the world of digital storytelling, knowing your audience isn't just beneficial, it's essential. The next time you publish don't just look at numbers, dive deep into the feedback, because when you truly understand and respond to your audience, your story doesn't just reach them, it resonates, impacts, transforms. How else can you get to know your audience? Right, so we're going to buy. In case you haven't gotten the free Know Your Audience Better Than They Know Themselves course, grab it here. I'm the powder, write your shit. Write shit your audience can't ignore, catch on the flip side pocket. P.S. Good little P.S. Okay, there's a lot here. Um, so. It's a good, this is basically a correlation email or a story into a, you know, into a sale email. So remember your audience is mirror showing you mistakes, just as embarrassing as mirror by cafe giggles, your followers always show your works. 
Yeah. So this is good. Um, I feel like it's missing one little piece. And again, I'm going to be very ruthless in these. That's the point of this. This is a very good email. It would be more than fine to go out as it is. I would add in a piece here again of sort of almost a callback to the joke that just happened to keep that intrigue, like dive, dive deep into the feedback. If somebody keeps laughing when you say a basic phrase, maybe something's wrong. Maybe you keep saying dick cheese because when you truly respond. So just <clears throat> just to sort of add that piece in there again, again, that's nitpicky. Um, the big thing you guys are going to see in this when I'm breaking stuff down is often the first line and how it's just sort of lackluster and missing. And this is a great story, but you can miss. And, and the subject line opens and, and makes you have the curiosity to keep going. But I would open with that ever embarrassed piece because that's a much better hook into the email. Like It's like on Instagram, TikTok, all these platforms, you can have a fucking great video, but if your first five seconds don't capture someone, they're not going to watch the rest. It doesn't matter how good the rest is. So, Perka, great email, fun to read, well done, good personality-driven stuff, um, great subject line. Don't expect all the emails to be, my critiques to be this complimentary. I can be rather ruthless. It's always, I'm only ever mean, I'm not mean, I do this because it's the way to help you, but don't expect lots of, you know, rainbows and unicorns up your bum, like what just happened there. Uh, this one comes from uh, Carlos Torres. Airport bloodsuckers and their cruel torture. I'm back in action with a huge plan just for you, but let's save that for later. First, let me share a story from last year. So, we returned home from an incredible two-week vacation outside the U.S. So, again, here, I'm back in action with a huge plan just for you. Now, again, I don't know the context of your list, what you've just sent them, what you're talking about, but to me, this is a waste of four lines for the most part. I mean, this, or this needs to be more specific because this is basically a tease of a an open loop of I'm back in action with a huge plan just for you, but let's save that for later. That's good open loop usage, but it's not specific enough. So I'm back in action with a huge plan just for you on how you can lose the next 12 pounds in 14 days or whatever that thing is. Let, first, let me sh share a story from last year. We returned home from an incredible tweak. So either either make that more specific or get rid of it. We returned home from an incredible two-week vacation outside the USA. We spent a unique, we spent a unique, a week in my sunny hometown of Puerto Rico celebrating Christmas with my wild and crazy family. After that, we jetted off to celebrate New Year's and Three Kings Day, a significant holiday for us Latinos with my wife's lovely family in beautiful Mexico. Good to just say for us Latinos because you're building a reputation with that group. What a blast, seriously, but oh, the flight back was a nightmare. Let me tell you all about it. Our original plan was to arrive on the 8th, but the flight was supposed to take us home. That was supposed to take us home was delayed in Mexico. This meant we would miss our connecting flight scheduled for 3.55 p.m. on January 8th. Upon our late arrival in the USA, Washington to be precise, we spent over an hour navigating immigration. Then came the task of retrieving our checked luggage and rechecking it for the connecting flight. What puzzled me is we didn't have to recheck our luggage before even knowing which flight on that given we reported. So, I'm getting a little bored to be honest. Um, and I mean, that's the nature of what you were doing in the airport was boring as well. But it's almost a little bit too like, like what's what's happening here? You know, get get to the point a little bit. We had to recheck our baggage. And I've believe me, I've been in these situations many times, so I understand. But it seemed rather logical, despite my reservations, airlines grumpy representative insisted we give it a shot and recheck our luggage to catch a flight that I was sure had already left. Can you say stupid? Good good little personality pieces in here, by the way. As Spock would say, it seemed rather logical. Can you say stupid? With no other options, we rechecked our luggage, although we still didn't know which flight it would be loaded onto. We proceeded through security. It was now 4.55. We arrived at the gate scheduled for our 3.55 p.m. departure. The gaze emptier than a brain-dead zombie and said yes. I explained our situation. Replied, I can't do anything for you here. Go to customer service. So I went to C20. I don't know the exact number of swimming travelers who've missed the connecting flights. Another flight departing in the morning of the 9th. While she explained these options, I noticed another airline rep mistreating a passenger in a wheelchair who needed special assistance because she wasn't feeling well. Now, does this sound like good? To me, it's total BS, especially when you're a blood sucking vampire latching onto your neck. Again, good writing, good, like, you know. 
display of personality and just interest. Um, or intrigue, which will be able to provide for whatever observed. It seems on from mystery person is anything short of cool torture. It gets my blood boiling, and you know what? This kind of thing happens all too often. People are so full of it. Achieve their goals, the product, or service. They're the reason you can put food on your table. With that being said, I genuinely want to help you achieve success and become an authority in your niche, especially in your area. But I need your input. Do me a favor. Okay. few things. Let's start with this sort of call to action. Hit reply to this email now and let me know you'd, what you'd like to learn more about in your niche or sub-niche. Your response will greatly assist me in tailoring something special uh, that I believe you'll absolutely love. Um, so this is not a very good call to action because it's just not uh, specific enough. So hit reply and let me know what you'd like to learn more about in your niche or sub niche. Like that seems very confusing. So if you've got people in, you know, fucking the weight loss niche, what are they going to say? I want to learn more about, you know, the people in my niche, what is working? Like, I, I don't think this is the right question. So no matter, reply emails are great and getting people to respond is a huge fucking thing. But if you don't ask a specific enough question, you're not going to, first off, you might get almost no responses to this. If, you, if there's any level of confusion as to what to respond with, they're not going to respond because they don't know what the fuck to say. Be more specific with the question you're asking and truly think about what is really going to help you. Don't do response or reply emails just to get a response. The point is to learn something. So what do you want to learn? What are you truly trying to learn right now um, in this situation? Are you, what's going to help you write better emails and, you know, understand your niche better? The other thing is it's just, it's a bit long-winded. Um, you know, the, the best rule of storytelling is to leave out things that don't matter. And I've been guilty of this even on stage with stand-up. Sometimes I'll tell a part of a story and I'm like, eh, that doesn't need to be that. And that's the beauty of telling a story for the first time is it may take five minutes and it's really a four-minute story. So that it's just trimming fat and getting rid of it. I would reread this, go through it, and think, ask yourself, what is truly necessary here, and get rid of the pieces that aren't. But overall, good email, just a bit long-winded, and not a great call to action. But good job. Um, okay. Like an ARC trooper, I don't know whose this is. Um... This might be Paul Klingen's, I don't know. Okay, heads up, subject line. That's a good subject line. I know Justin Goff uses it. Uh, I mean, it's that's fine. Hey, just a heads up, I'm running a special offer right now for my private one-to-one -one coaching group. For those who qualify, I'm guaranteeing 20 pounds lost to your money back. And when you finish, I'll send you a personalized clone trooper helmet for graduating Pitnet Academy. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> I would even go with subject line heads up parentheses literally and then because then you can go see why i said heads up literally in the subject line i will literally give you a helmet for your head if you succeed at this um for those who qualify so this is very much a direct sales email with just here's the alpha here's what's happening and those are great and you've done a good job of getting a guarantee out there early telling them what they win, this is the first time I'm doing this, don't blow my budget, I'm doing it for five people, if you're not familiar with what I do, here's what you should know. I use a system called the ERC system, managing workout supplementation, proprietary training, the company, the community does theme challenges, members are granted access to in-depth training, I taught yoga, group fitness, personal done online, uh, I've seen people lose 10 pounds in a month, 20 pounds in 12 weeks, committed acid reflux, for MCL surgeries, it's the real deal, something I've been refining for the past six months, which is why I'm pumped to share it with you, I've never offered a guarantee, I've never offered a personal clone trooper helmet, and honestly, you won't find this anywhere else, this is all good, this actually sounds a lot like my copy, um, of just, which is why I'm pumped to share it with you, I've never offered a guarantee, you're not saying I'm never going to offer a guarantee, again. you're just saying I've never done this, I've never done that, that's why this is special, why, again, reason why, why am I doing this, it's super important, very well done, 
because truly individualized coaching is rare. To add in themes that Star Wars nerds would enjoy is even rarer, as if that wasn't niche enough. You get a gamified experience that sees you rank up within the Fitnet Academy from cadet to trooper to an ARC trooper. I wouldn't have had the guts to make something so niche if I didn't know the system works. I wish I would have had something like this when I started my fitness journey. It would result in wasted time doing keto when I really like pizza, riding stationary bikes, running on treadmills I hated, so my advice. Yeah, and these are even their own emails in themselves to expand upon. Um, it's a really cool concept of the Star Wars shit. You know, nerds need to be in shape too. Um, this ends up being a good fit for you. You get a private community of nerds, a guaranteed results. Like I said, I'm only taking five people, taking the risk out of this heavy lift on my shoulders. That's a hell of a deal. So whether you're a dad short on time, service member, member don't want to, or a Star Wars nerd lacking in self-confidence, so a stronger call to action. Um, click here to get all the details. Um, this is only, yeah, I'm closing enrollment on Sunday. At what time? So make sure you check it out while you can. Here's the link again. Um, but overall, yeah, this is good. Um, I like it. I think sort of the only pieces, again, I think uh, the little subject line tweak there. Or when a stormtrooper helmet could be its own, um, or whatever helmet it is, uh, could be your subject line, just straight up, here's what you can win. Um, the only piece that's maybe lacking in here, and people probably already know this about you if they're on your list, but it's sort of your own proof, like what do you look like? Like are you in shape? Because that's a huge thing for what you're doing. Um, but that could be its own email, as, you know, from Star Wars Nerd to Han Solo or whatever it is, um, sort of showing you a transformation. But overall, this is this is really solid, good bullets. Um, I like this section a lot of I've never done this. And then um, I'm only taking five people for this. That's actually the only piece that's a little unclear. Is it only five people? Oh, it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching group. That's a little confusing, actually, now that I think about it that so are you doing one-on-one -on -one coaching but they're also in a group a little confusing so maybe clarify there all right benny wallington let's push on to yours mate he's an australian so i'm going to talk like this for the entire time just to sort of bug him you know um no i won't do that so these are three core emails i write for my clients based on teachers work on building businesses using laws of the universe three concepts hold well make a product and get it on all of them <sighs> By the way, I got, I got this mug in Norway, and in Norway, man, a couple guys are drinking cappuccinos. Cappuccino guy now. I uh, made it myself here at my house, and uh, I got, it's just good. Raw milk, some bulletproof high-quality coffee in the espresso machine. Yeah, fucking good. Anyways. Uh, the Mission Evolution one of my favorite emails to write. Hashtag Straya, mate. For those who don't know, Straya is the way that Australians say Australia. Uh, they don't even know how to pronounce their own country properly. They say Australia instead of Australia. That's how you know an English person saying it because they'll say, Oh, you're from Australia. Um, which I say Straya as well because it's the right fucking way to say it, mate. A U S T R A Y A. The pulse behind the oak tree your invite to our next chapter. Also, if you guys do want to include your preview text, it's a huge part of emails these days, so feel free to do that. I, I don't care for the hey first name shit. Honestly, it doesn't fucking do anything for me. Um, I wanted to share with you our early bird is still open. Click here to jump in. I wanted to share with you the story behind Liberating Love. This is part story, part invitation to join us in the next chapter of Liberating Love, but let's start the story first. So I would only be opening with the early bird is still open if you're like sort of at the end of the offer and they know and they're like ready to take action otherwise I would just go jump straight into the story because if they click here they're not going to read this so typically you want to have one good link at the bottom of an email so that people have the setup of the email before they click rather than going straight in it's kind of like foreplay it's having a link at the top is kind of like fucking without foreplay um, so it's you know which is fine sometimes um, but not most of the time. So, just a little note there. This is part story, part invitation to join us in the next chapter. Let's start the story first. It all began six years ago. Cat and I in ceremony together. 
So to be a bit nitpicky, um, there's probably a part of the story that should move to the top. So we'll see what that is. Kat and I sat in ceremony together on the floor of our bedroom in Noongar country, Perth, Western Australia, like a lot of young couples who went through the fire early on, had to work through letting go of past relationship pain, breaches of trust, jealousy, the pressures of working intimately together. To the point of being unsure about the future of our relationship, we navigated some big challenges, had well and truly come out on the other side. The ceremony was to acknowledge us, the ceremony was to set aside for us and nobody else. It was a time you can only describe as hard, hard opening. There was love, the first beat of the pulse that would become liberating love, and amidst the glow and warmth of that evening, I also felt a sadness creeping in. Good writing, very good writing here, Benny. Because in that moment of great connection, I could sense an even greater disconnection between couples I knew, friends and family, and the many more I didn't who were suffering in silence behind facades of societal norms for what was an acceptable and modern relationship. Right there on the floor of our bedroom, we'd cultivated a safe space, and we knew in that moment, safe space was the answer. And I would even say here, if you, you know, feel like it here, like, and I don't mean safe space, like South Park, you know, woke culture, don't say things. I mean a truly safe space to explore, and you don't have to say that, but I would in my personal brand. We knew if we were sitting and creating a space together, we could surely recreate it outside our bedroom space to facilitate couples to come together, let go of past hurts, to reconnect and remember the love they are and the love they share, their collective pulse. Then as fast as it arrived, it flew by in a flash. You're a very good writer, so it's cool just to read, you know, the good writing. Kat and I found ourselves exploring and sharing our collective pulse with others around the world, live retreats, online programs, festivals, and workshops, among so much gratitude for supporting couples on their journey. There was one memory in particular sitting in the afterglow of our first retreat, and all the couple of it, you know, my parents' age. Life had been like if my parents had been exposed. We said goodbye to the couple. I sat quietly stoked that I get to do this work. Beyond the stoke, there was a new feeling and knowing so the work required for a next generation to have a different model. Generations' responsibilities, the work we put here to do. And then we went supporting hundreds of couples to create safe spaces. It was hard opening, wild, hard at times. Kat was pregnant and decided to hang up her teaching while she transitioned. I took a breath. I took a breather from relationship work, focused on supporting men. But there was a niggle, and it got stronger. A calling to the work I was here to do, tapping on the shoulder. This time it's different. Before Rafi, I was still loving, evolving, and growing my emotional roots, relational roots. When I ran liberating love's last cohort in February, I felt the roots consolidate. I can combine all my cases. And I don't know. By doing so. Invite you and your partner to join us. The early bird offer is up until the end of the week. Save four hundred dollars as well as the option for the six month payment plan plus. Because you're on the waitlist and snacks is the first modules. Module. As always, you can ask any questions, we'll get back to you ASAP and you'll call until you. So the only piece here that's it, it kind of feels the call to action felt a bit soft. After all that build up and all that stuff, it felt kinda of like uh um, almost like to continue with the metaphor for intercourse, it felt like a little premature and a bit of a, a lackluster ending, perhaps. Um, we begin soon. If you're feeling the call, I invite you and your partner to join us. The early bird offer is up until the end of the week. Just a little piece of like, we will help you work through the deepest parts of your relationship and the problems that are holding you back in just a short three-day weekend or whatever the fuck it is, just giving that little piece of the benefit in there. Um, you know, normally, and this is where instead of just save $400, what is our price? Do the math. Normally, it's $2,000. Right now, for the next four days only, it's $1,600. That's a $400 savings. Um, telling them what it is, what it normally is, setting that high anchor like, when we were doing this for people one-on-one, -on -one, it was $10,000. And again, don't make shit up, but just tell the truth about what it should cost, what it, you know, hit that price anchor and then say it's $400 off and go through that. So I'm not going to go through the other emails because that was a long one, and, um, but <clears throat> good stuff. So uh, good, very good writing. And the finale, have you heard the latest about Taylor Swift? Now Taylor Swift right now is hotter than the sun, um, so good thing to talk about. Uh, I personally am a Taylor Swift fan of the music. I think if you're not, you're lying to yourself. However, this whole fucking thing with Travis Kelsey and all this stuff, I don't even think they're intercoursing each other. I think Travis Kelsey 
sold out, and I'm not going to talk about my opinion on a certain drug company that he did an ad for, but that shit annoyed me, and I don't get annoyed particularly easily. But anyways, have you heard the latest about Taylor Swift? Did she make the big list? Well, that could be a loaded question. So I don't know what the big list is. I would be a little more specific with what, with what this list is. Well, that could be a loaded question depending on your opinion of Taylor Swift. My God, she's only thick. The other thing is, I don't like to assume they read the subject line. Some people open because it's your name. So I would just say, did Taylor Swift make the big list? I would say, or like, the, whatever list it is. My God, she's only 33 years old. Her fame encompasses far beyond the concert stage. That's not quite proper English. Um, her, her fame reaches far beyond the concert stage. Being a huge football fan, I have to listen every Sunday to countless quotes and sightings of Swift. Just in case you crawled out from beneath a rock, Kansas City's chief tight end, Kansas City Chiefs tight end, Travis Kelsey's been romantically linked to it, though I hear his mum is not too happy. She's been at a num- I think his mum's happy as shit. That family is just a whore for celebrity. They are just trying to be in the spotlight as much as possible, mother included. She's been at a number of games. It always seems a major headline. If sh- is she at the game or not? Some of the just, like, by the way, the formatting here should be better spaced out and stuff. It's a little hard to read. This fall, not only has she been on TV, she just released a concert film, a documentary of her latest tour eras. The flick is now closing in on 200 million at the global box office. Its 93 million domestic opening was the second largest for any October in release in history. So Bloomberg insiders say an estimated net worth is conservative. They're basing it on assets and earnings that could be confirmed. So drumroll please, Bloomberg is stating that she's now at the cool 1.1 billion. So yep, she made the big list. So I don't, uh, I don't know why you call it the big list, but I would maybe just called something else but just shows it. so this is this is the part that I, I, I read this before I, I don't agree with this line and I think this is where it needs work just goes to show anyone can become a billionaire these days you just have to get started that's a very <laughs> bad example just so anybody can become a billionaire you mean Taylor Swift one of the most talented artists and songwriters and famous people uh, in the last fucking 20 years can do it like I don't. I don't think it's a good example. Just so you to show anyone can become a billionaire should be more like he is this random guy. His name's Rick. He was a farmer, and then he did this, and now he's a billionaire. Um, this just isn't the right transition from just to show anyone can become a billionaire. You have to get started. So um, that's not the line I would use. I would find a different transition of like you don't have to be. I'd say more if anything, but you don't have to be Taylor Swift or a you know a world class football player to become a billionaire these days you just have to get and I wouldn't go with billionaire too that's so far reaching for almost anybody I would say just to make your first six figures even learn more about the BLC I don't know what this is hurry uh, are you a Taylor Swift fan reply back and let me know just for the rep- record I'm not a fan but I admire her business plan Chris not a Swifty Baker that's fine good to take a stance um, but uh, yeah Cool. Well, you guys, I have to stop this because there are people at my house working on it and I need to talk to them before they go. But this was the end anyways. So I would just work on this transition in this end piece here, Chris Baker. Um, overall, though, good sort of, you know, hook and stuff around Taylor Swift. Uh, I've got the collective call starting in 20 minutes as well, so i got to prep for that. Um, but thank you so much. This was fun. Um, and we'll see if I make them this long in the future. This took a while, so we'll see. But uh, just let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this. What were your biggest takeaways? Um, you know, what would you think? Cheers.